Okay, so coming up soon is going to be part three of programming these GM uh, computers. The uh, This is a P59 sitting in front of us, uh, but I'm building a harness now for doing the P01s or the 0411 uh, PCM. So this one has the green and blue connector, and the one I'm working on today is going to be the red and blue. Basically what part three will be is using this Bluetooth dongle here and LS Droid to, to flash it, show you how it works. But before I can do that, I need to build a harness. So I'm going to show you guys today how to build uh, an LS harness. This is, again, this is the red and blue connectors, which they actually go in that order on there. Um, and uh, got to depin this and get it ready to go. So uh, it's, it's just going to be a pretty quick video, depinning this, uh, wiring it up. And so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm gonna show you real quick on the computer where you can find the pinout that that I used to do this, and then uh, we'll get into it. Okay, so this is where you'll see the the pinout that I'm using. Um, you just go to LT lt1swap.com. Uh, I'll I'll put the exact link down in the description here, uh, so that you get the whole thing. But this has the full pinout of the. Uh, connectors here so uh, I'm just gonna be using this to do it so let's uh, let's go ahead and start depending this and we can t okay so uh, first thing you gotta do is get these guys off of here so just take a little mechanics pick here and there's a little tab right there you're just gonna push down on it and then you can pull these right off All right, we'll start with the blue connector. I, I went ahead and wrote on top the blue versus red uh, because uh, you can't actually stick this blue one on the red one. So you want to make sure that you do annotate which one's which because you can put them back together wrong or just take them apart one at a time. And we're going to start with blue because that's the order that that list goes in. It's connector one, connector two. So uh, we'll just start here and uh, we'll start at pin one. So pin 1's a ground, so we'll keep it, but let's go to pin 2 and just push it on out. So, as you can see, there's a little white tab here. Just kind of lift up gently on that, and then just kind of push a little bit upwards and back, and then that'll come right out. So, that's all there is to get them out of there. Okay, so the blue connector, what we end up having left after pulling out all the pins we don't need is we have pin 1, pin 19, uh, pin 20, and then pin 40. And we're going to come down to the bottom. We have uh, 57, 58, and uh, that would be 75. So that's all what we need off of um, the uh, blue connector. So we can go ahead and put the caps back in there. See if I can get the orientation right here on camera. There we go. All right, so we're done with this one. Uh, and then we need to deep in our red connector here. And uh, we'll have a nice rat's nest of wires left over once we're done with that. So let's move on down here. Okay, so now the red connector's done. We're left with two wires. Uh, all right, let's get these back on there. All right, so we have pin one and pin 40 left. There are only two left on the red connector. So we have now depinned both of our connectors down to the bare necessity to just get it to turn on. So that's, that's it to strip them down. Now we got to whole rat's nest of wires here. Let's zoom out so we can see that a little better. There we go. Good old rat's nest of wires. And two connectors ready to 
wire them up. So we'll uh, strip some wires, get them all soldered up, and uh, add our OBD, OBD2 port to it. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to show you a little welder's trick here. Because we ain't colorblind. I don't need this written on here anymore. So permanent marker. It'll take a little rubbing alcohol. Not so permanent anymore. It comes right off. So, yeah, especially on non-porous surfaces. This is a little corroded, so it gets stuck in there a little bit. But it comes right off. Uh, it doesn't work so good on wood, but metal, that eh, comes right off. Perfect. So I'll show you get a instrument cluster in. Somebody wrote their initials on there to their little warranty thing. And you don't want them taking credit for your work. Get your little rubbing alcohol out. It'll come right off. So eh, I just thought I'd show that real quick. So we don't need it to say red and blue because we're not colorblind. We can see what that is. No offense if you are, though. Let's get these things wired together. So I, when I got started, get the bottom one done there. Uh, I got the OBD2 port uh, kind of started here. And I went and bought some of these damn connectors. Can't stand these kind of connectors, but it's the best thing I could do without having to wait forever for something else to come in. I was just going to get a whole nother OBD2 and uh, just wire it and leave it dedicated in here. But I was going to have to wait forever for it to come in the mail. So, because I just, uh, you know, I don't want to be going out and going to the junkyard a bunch right now with all this going on. You know, it's right, right in the middle of COVID-19. I'm not going to be running around going to all sorts of places right now. Try to try to stay home, keep everybody at home safe. Uh, so, you know, it's not about you and me, it's about everybody else. But let's go ahead and get started on this. Uh, so here's all our positives and um, get these in here. Okay, let's get a little bit of this heat shrink on here instead of wrapping the old thing up in uh, electrical tape. And you'll see here in a minute why I added this guy. This is going to be for wiring into there, so. Don't have to use a lighter when you have a hot air station. Always melt these things with a lighter. Okay, same same for the uh, ground wires here, just put them all together, solder them down, wrap it with some heat shrink. Okay, so uh, after you uh, solder in all your connectors there, put on your heat shrink, uh, you're just going to crimp these guys on. There's no point really showing how to do a crimp, I mean I'm sure y'all got the concept. Uh, I really can't stand these kind of crimps, but it's what I had, so there we go. We got uh, our OBD2 ports. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So uh, these little wires we left sticking off for the crimps are so that way we can attach and detach this. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. You can just solder the whole thing in if you're going to make it a standalone unit here. So let's get her all plugged up and purple so yeah i put a little stretch of purple on there so that way in six months when i grab this thing again after i forgot about it you know i don't forget which way it hooks up so there we go i mean it's really the only cable left shouldn't be too complicated now we got our ob2 port in there we take our little bluetooth dongle here and plug it in plug that in now let's uh hook this thing up to a computer and give it a test so blue is your top one and then red is your bottom and you don't need to tighten these guys too much uh, just a little seven mil uh, so same as when you're taking out the instrument clusters and stuff seven mil and you just just get it down a little bit sure it's not the prettiest setup but I wanted to be able to remove my OBD two port so then we're just gonna give her power right there so let's go ahead and give it a test let me hook it up 
Okay, so let's take a look at this real quick on the screen here. So, yeah, not the best setup for looking at it, but let's let's try it out. So let's power this guy up, giving it uh, the 12 volts. We've now powered up our little dongle here. And let's go ahead and hit ready. And, yeah, it was telling us that we weren't up to date. So let's go read, and we're going to read this style. And... See if we connect here. Oh, I got Bluetooth turned off. It looks like, yep, sure do. Alright, we don't need location on. Battery's getting low. Okay. So, OBD Link LX. And, yep, continue. And we want to read PCM. So there we go. We got our OSID up here and we're just going to start downloading it. So it's found the key. Oh, getting messages about working on instrument clusters. And there we go. It's going to take it about 11 minutes to read this. So, uh, and it takes about 22 minutes to read the, uh, the one megabyte. So the P59s. So we'll let this run and we'll come back to this and take a look at it. Okay, and now it's done, about 10 minutes later. So then we just got to give it a name, so we'll just name this uh, test. Save it, and it saved it as test.bin, and it's on there. So now we have it on here, and uh, we can uh, play with it on the computer. But yeah, that's uh, all there really was to this video. I just wanted to show you how to build the harness, and just show you a cheap little, you know, this is a $50 uh, dongle here and uh, a free app you can uh, read the uh, stuff the creator of this app uh, it's uh, his name's Pete uh, he sells a dongle made special for this app that runs a lot faster um, so it's definitely an option out there uh, videos not sponsored by him in any way um, but that's uh, that's that he does sell them so i just wanted to throw that out there if, if you're interested in buying one from them they're about the same price as these it runs a little faster but it's also kind of specific to his app so this one's a little more universal it can be used with some other stuff um but yeah take take it what you want you know it 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 does run like 10 times faster with his dongle but uh, I don't i don't need it to run that fast uh just hook up the battery charger to the truck if you're doing these in the car with this but i'll see you guys in the next video just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button but uh i'll see you guys in the next video